to look at another aspect of this though just because you are prohibited from steamrolling over anyone else does not imply that you are permitted listen to what I'm saying does not imply that you are permitted you are not permitted to allow anyone else to steamroll over you you see steam being steamrolled does not make you meek I've known some people that want to take that demeanor upon them and they just allow everybody to walk over them make demands on them they just don't have a no button some people need a no button you know, being steamrolled doesn't make you meek or humble. You know what it makes you? Compressed. That's what a steamroller does. It compresses that sand. Now, I know you've heard of depressed people. Have you ever heard of compressed people? Well, these are people that have allowed themselves to be steamrolled, walked over all the time. Every dream that they've had, and they think it's sacrifice. It's not sacrifice. It's being a poor steward of the dream that God has put on their heart. Don't allow anybody to steamroll you. And here's the thing, here's the thing. You need to defend that dream from the steamrollers. There, there are times that you'll need to defend it fiercely. And this is not being unchristian. This is about having those barriers where you say, look, look, my brother, look, my sister, I love you. But that which you require of me, I'm not prepared to give to you. That which you require to me, I cannot give to you. I'm not permitted to give it to you because God has placed that dream, that desire on my heart. That's my purpose. I cannot miss the purpose that God has put on my heart. I cannot miss the purpose that God has created me for and designed me for. I cannot live that way. That's an empty way of living. I refuse to become compressed for you. Now look. If you would like me to walk with you and help you, I will help you realize I can be a channel and a resource to help you realize your dream, but don't come laying your hands on my dream. This is holy ground, something that God has designed and tailored specifically for me. I see in the Bible where Paul writes to Timothy, and I, I don't think that the context would exclude my application here. But I see where Paul writes to the young pastor Timothy in 1 Timothy 6 verse 20. He says to Timothy, Oh Timothy, can you hear almost the urgency in the language? He says, Oh Timothy, guard the good deposit which has been entrusted to you. Timothy, that thing which God has placed in you, that thing which is given to you, guard it. You see, you see we need to guard what God has given to us we need to guard it against working 70 or 80 hour weeks we need to guard it because that's going to suffocate and wither it we need to guard that good deposit we need to guard that good deposit about uh, against well-intentioned people that are trying to protect us to the degree that they're robbing us of our dreams we need to guard that good deposit against the negativity that is so prevalent in the thought processes and the negativity in our news headlines and news reports. We need to guard it. We need to steward that dream. Oh, Timothy, you're the anxious, the, 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 almost the angst, the urgency in Paul. It's like Paul has learned this lesson the hard way, and he's taking his, his young protege, he's taking Timothy, he's saying, Timothy, this is a life lesson. That good deposit that God has given to you, you have to guard it. Then Paul repeats this. A little bit later in 2 Timothy 1.14, he says, By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. Listen, do you, see, do you see the agency of guarding? Don't try guard it in your own strength. But he says, By the Holy Spirit who dwells within us, guard the good deposit entrusted to you. My brother, my sister, this is what I want to say to you. Guard the good deposit. If you are praying to God for dreams and visions, if you are praying to God for a desire, perhaps your desire has withered years ago. It just got lost. Your personality has been bulldozed and steamrolled by the demands of life. And now you're in a situation where you're trusting God again and you're praying to Him. You're saying, Oh Lord, put something on my heart. Yes, yes. And he'll do that. And why, why will he do that? I know that he will delight to do that because the Bible tells us he'll do that. You just delight yourself in him and he's going to place those things on your heart. But here's my word. When he places it on your heart, guard what he gives you. 
When I say guard, I don't just mean protect, although protect is a very important part of guard. Yes, a absolutely. But, but you need to nurture it. You need to water it. You need to put it in an environment where it's going to where it's going to shoot the bud. Put it in an environment where it's going to grow to strength. Where the roots will go down and the fruits will come out. Guard what God is going to give you. Now, your dream is going to require a tremendous amount of sacrifice and hard work on your part. Tremendous amount. I, I, I mean, come on, don't be cross with me. I'm just telling you the truth here. And I'm telling you the truth in spite of so many other teachings which have tried to teach us differently. There have been other teachings that have taught us, no man, if God has given it, it's going to be easy. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to work for it because this is not a gospel of works. This is a gospel of grace, brother. And they, they miss the point. They miss the point. One of the marks that a desire is from God is not only that God will give you that desire, but He will give you the desire for the process to see that desire realized. Because there's going to be a process. But you're going to love it, man. You're going to love the changes that you see in yourself. You're going to love the changes in your thought process. You're going to love the people that, that you come into contact with. You're going to love the circumstances, the extraordinary, out there, crazy things that are going to start happening in your life when you pursue a desire from God. You're going to get passionate, not just to see the desire realized, but for the process. And yes, if it takes hard work, you say, well, sure, Lord, while I've got strength in me, I know if you require the work, then God, you will give me the strength. Thank you, God, that I can trust in you to give me the strength. See, one of the marks Another one, there's a couple, I hope you're making notes. But another mark of a, a desire that is from God is that it's going to be way, way, way bigger than you are. It's going to be bigger than your skill set. It's going to be bigger than your budget. It's going to be bigger than your personality. It's going to be bigger than your energy levels. It's going to be bigger than your connections or anything else that you may be bringing to the table. It's going to be bigger. If it wasn't, it wouldn't require God you'd be able to just do it in your own strength. No, no, no. It's going to require hard work for you. It's going to come, it's going to bring you to a place where you, you, you you're, you're come to realize that you cannot rely on the things that you once relied on. But when you start connecting with this dream world and this vision world and, and to see those dreams and those visions drawn out of the dream realm and birthed into the temporal realm, if you're going to have that done, it's going to take dedication, commitment, hard work from your side. Sometimes sweat, and yeah, sometimes tears. But oh, it's going to be worth it. Oh, it's going to be worth it. Because your desire will be there as well. You see, when God gives you a dream, he gives with it an invitation for you to partner with him in seeing that dream realized. So it's not like God's just going to place a dream in your heart and say, well, there it is. Go at it. No, no. There's an invitation. And God says, well, there's the dream. And I have just... You see, the dream is just a revelation to you of the desire and the purpose that I have for you. Now that I've given you the dream and the desire... There it is. Come on. Let's go get it together. Let's go. See, your shepherd leads and your shepherd guides to you, gu guides you as well. And there's this beautiful partnering that happens with the Most High God. This is how God loves to operate. He loves to operate that way. You doing your bit and Him doing His. He, he could just snap His finger, fingers and it would be done. But there would be something lost in your relationship with Him if God did it that way. But, but the dream, as he partners with you, you're going to come to see aspects of God's personality that you never knew were there. You're going to come to see aspects of your own personality that you never knew were there. You're going to come to know some strengths in yourself. Why? Because they're not rooted in you. They come and they're deposited from God. And it's only as you walk on this dream road 
that you come to see these strengths. Then you start getting confidence in who you are, who you are in Christ. No Christian should ever have a low self-esteem. Now I understand there's a place for modesty. I understand there's a place for meekness. Absolutely, the Bible speaks about these things. But I'm not talking about the opposite extreme, which is a low self-esteem. Somebody with a low self-esteem has not found their purpose. Because when you find your purpose, when you operating in your dream realm, there's going to be a sense of confidence in you. Like, yeah, I got this. I got this. It's tough. It's hard. But I got this. And that's my prayer, is that the sense of, of confidence, not just in yourself, but of yourself in Christ, right? That, that, that that's going to be birthed within you. That a sense of joy and delight is aroused in you as you come to know this aspect of who you are and this aspect comes as you partner with God in discovering who he made you to be and what dream it is that he put on your heart partnership see even Jesus spoke about partnering with the father do you remember Jesus said I do nothing on my own but speak just as the father taught me in other words in John 8:28 Jesus was saying you know, I, I don't do it. Of, I, I look to God. I look to God, and, and when I see God doing it, then I do it. That's partnership with God. That's partnership. In your dream, don't look to yourself. Every step you take in your dream, you look to God. And you say, well, Lord, th this is what you've given me. This is what I think it is. But I don't want to be opening the wrong doors here. So lead and guide. See, the Apostle Paul wrote in a similar way when he spoke of working together with him. That's working together with God in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 1. See, there is a price required for you to achieve that dream. It's not a monetary price. No. The price that is required for you to achieve your dream is that price that makes you the authentic possessor of that dream. Nobody's going to be able to deny when you reach that dream that you are worthy of that dream because you've put in what was required to own it. You've put in what was required to possess that dream. You've put in the hours. You've put in the de dedication. You've put in the sacrifice. But oh boy, have you grown through it. And when you get to that dream, that beautiful dream, that, that weighty dream, that dream of substance, that dream of so much substance, it would have crushed you without the process. But because of the process, because you are the authentic possessor of that dream, you have what it takes to bear that dream up because it fits you uniquely. Nobody else could carry your dream. And you can carry nobody else's dream. There's no room for covetousness in the dream state. But the process has made you the authentic possessor of that dream. Now, make no mistake in the pursuit of your dream you will get knocked down many times there are going to be times when you get discouraged there are going to be times where you, you think to yourself well, what's it all about is it worth it was this genuinely from God there are going to be times that you question yourself like that but by his grace no matter how many times you get knocked down you will get up as well because not only will you have the will to pursue that dream but you will have the strength to get up after you've been knocked down. And sometimes it's good that we get knocked down because it shows us and reminds us of our dependency upon God. It also does a work of compassion within us so that when we recognize others who are pursuing their dream, who are in a knockdown state, it won't make us judgmental, it won't make us harsh, and it won't let us be indifferent. It will help us to extend a hand of help and love to these people. And in so doing that we can also partner with others in helping them see their dream. And so that brings the church and the church community together. Gets rid of this nonsense of a self-made man or a self-made woman. No such thing in the community of God. The Apostle Paul had a dream to see the gospel realized. And in seeing that gospel realized, he was brought to a point where he wrote, We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, 
but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. 2 Corinthians 4, 8 and 9. Right? So all these things happen. All these things happen sometimes. But when these things happen, there's another bearing scripture here. Where it says, for those who love God. Let, let me paraphrase. For those who delight themselves in God. For those who love God with all their mind, their heart, their soul, their strength. For those who love God, all things. I'm sure you know the scripture. For those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to His purpose. For those who have a dream of God, a desire of God implanted in their heart all things all things see I, I, I've been I've been afflicted in many ways but not in every way like Paul but Paul says all things work together for good those things that would per perplex you uh, those things that would discourage you those things that would demoralize you all things it doesn't say all things are good but all things work together for the good I've had some people say to me pastor you know I, I just I just I just can't handle it anymore for me it's just one thing now listen to the language it's just one thing after another thing after another thing I say yeah but Paul said all things so the more things that are working against you right now it just means that there's going to be more things that are going to be working for you at a later stage the more things that the devil throws at you it just means that he's giving you building material it's actually exciting stuff this is why the Bible says we can rejoice in our sufferings because we know that all things work together for the good. For Paul, this was just not, not, not just locker room pep talk. This, this was resilience. And the sense of resilience was a spiritual gift from God. Not only did God give Paul a dream, but God also gave to Paul that which was required to see that dream realized. That, that which was required, that which was necessary. You see, Paul was so resilient because mixed in with his awesome supernatural faith was a sense of practicality. Paul knew that we have this treasure in jars of clay. See, God makes the good deposit and he puts that good deposit within us. But it's in jars of clay. Uh, it, it's in a vessel that is subject to discouragement or fatigue or tiredness. Sometimes it's, it's subject to things like anger or malice or, 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 or rage and all those sinful things as well. But, but this is the process of how we work those things out, right? But you see, the treasure is in jars of clay. Do you realize that what God has put in you, do you realize that your dream is a treasure? It's something to be valued. It's not something to be despised. It's not something to be ashamed of. It's not something to be embarrassed about and say, oh, well, it can't be Christian to have a desire in my heart. No. It's a good deposit. It's a treasure that God has put within you. But he's put it in, in vessels of clay. Why did God do that? Why, why such a good gift in, in, in jars of clay? Well, to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. That dream is so amazing that when, you when that dream is fulfilled in your life, there's a very real chance of you becoming puffed up, very real chance of you becoming conceited if, if you had that deposit put in a superhuman being. No. God wants to make sure that when you're enjoying the dream, the dream won't destroy you or separate you from Him. Or become cold or indifferent to others who are still seeking their dream. No. We will always know that the power belongs to God and not to us. The dream, no matter how great the dream makes you, it will always make you humble. And a humble servant, not just of God, but to walk humbly with your brother or your sister in Christ as well. Yes, it takes hard work. It takes dedication. It takes discipline. This is why... So few people ever experience the exhilaration of having a dream realized. And I, I believe that a dream that is not realized or a dream that is never pursued 
will become a nightmare. Very few people actually embrace a dream. Now some can embrace a dream that is from the devil, yes, and they will see their families ruined, they will see uh, stress and tensions and yeah, yeah, those dreams can be realized. But I'm saying a dream that is from God very few people see it realized because they don't come to an understanding that this is God at work in their lives and there's a process that is attached and when people see that there's a process that's attached some of them put their hands up and say no this is just too much how sad to live an entire life and never embrace that for which God purposed you God knows how exhausting the process may be perhaps you're going through an exhausting process right now we're, we're not living in easy times I know it's tough God knows it's tough Jesus said come to me all who are tired all who are heavy laden and labor come to me and I will give you rest you see Jesus is he's not hard he understands what fatigue can be like and exhaustion but but here's the thing don't ever ask don't ever ask God to deliver you from the process of the dream. Some of you are exhausted by the process and you feel tired and discouraged because you've got the process but you've lost sight of the dream. Don't ever ask God. Some of you need to repent of asking God to deliver you from the process. You've said, oh God, I'm tired. Oh, please just make this stop. Don't do that. Don't do that because if God takes away the process, he's got to take away the dream rather say oh god give me a fresh vision give me a fresh dream oh god refresh that dream within me show me why it is that i'm paying this price show me why it is that i'm going through this oh god would you place that dream on my heart again give it to me tonight lord let me wake up tomorrow in courage let me wake up tomorrow knowing that there's a reason that I'm going through what I'm going through. Let me, let me go through, wake up tomorrow knowing that there's an outcome. Let me wake up tomorrow knowing that all these things that I'm going through are going to work together for my good. But God, don't stop the process because if you're the giver of the dream, you need to be the governor of the dream. And I know, I know, Lord God, that you're the governor of all these things that I'm busy going through right now. So my dear friend, do, do you know that God's got a dream for you? Do you know that God's got a plan and a purpose for you? Are, are you convinced that that dream which God has put in your heart is not wicked, it's not evil, it's not a bad thing to have a desire? That's from God. And that is one of the ways that God communicates to us through the desires that we have. Perhaps you've lost sight of your dream. Perhaps you've lost sight of the purpose that God's got for you. And I, I just want to stir you up and I want to encourage you. Pray to God. Pray to God. I, I believe that if you've lost sight of the dream, perhaps it's been a long time since there's been any kind of real desire within you, a real godly desire, a safe desire. I, I want to encourage you. Pray to God. Just go to Him and say, Oh God. Please, would you start that desire in me? Would you give me a desire in my heart? Something that would glorify you, my precious Lord, and draw me closer to you and make me a better disciple, make me more like Christ and, and, and love my neighbor more like Jesus did too. Oh God, would you do that in my heart? Now I want you to go and do this in your own private time. If, if, if this has just resonated with your spirit, go and do that. Go and seek him. And I trust that he'll confirm this word by a scripture that he gives you and leads you and starts leading you in a beautiful way. Your dreams should be an exciting place. So go do that in your own time. But for now, allow me just to come in agreement with you and pray with you as we ask God for this. Would you do that? Join me as we pray together. Heavenly Father, we love you. And I thank you for your very deep and great love for us. Thank you, Lord, for dreams and, and visions. And we will speak more about the different kinds of dreams and visions, Lord, as times un unfold. But, but God, for now, the type of dream in the sense of a desire of a heart, Lord God, I, I want to come in agreement with those desires that you have for your people. Because if they're from you, it's very very good and oh god I, I just get a sense of excitement in me i'm not only excited for myself i'm excited to for my dear friend who is listening to this message today i want to pray lord god that you would just take their dream life to another level even from this evening lord god 
there are times where you need to deposit things in our subconscious because our, our conscious is just so busy or frantic sometimes. But God, would you make their sleep sweet? Would you, would you let them wake up in the morning knowing, Hey, I've experienced something from the Lord and the Lord has started directing me by a dream or a vision that He's given in my heart. But I need to take this to the Word now. I need to go and get substance and substantiation from my ultimate authority, which is God's Word. Oh God, would you confirm what, I've, what you've given me or, or shut out what was given to me God, by your word, would you just confirm it by the scriptures? Oh Lord, I want to pray for great passion and enthusiasm to reignite in your people as we become people who are ignited by the dreams that you give us once again. For I pray this in the name that is above every other name, the name of my blessed Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Go and have some happy dreams. Go and have an amazing week. God bless you. Bye-bye.